The Lion King musical is the highest-grossing Broadway production of all time and Broadway's third longest-running show in history. That made her the first woman to win the Tony Award for directing. But she says. I wouldn't have been interested in working with Disney, quite honestly.、It、wasn't my thing at all. The world—it's not—it's too commercial for me.、Mm -hmm. She transformed the popular animation film into a sensory, breathtaking spectacle, for which she also won the Tony Award for original costume design. I want to put the human and the animal, so I, I started to do the visual of the animal head and the human below, which is a double event. She has created numerous successes on both silver screen and stage, but the musical Spider-Man: Turn Off the Dark was the exception. Maybe it's been fulfilling artistically, but disappointing in box office. I wouldn't call that a failure. Although she is a frequent guest at theatre festivals in Asia, her first visit to the Wuchun Theatre Festival has yielded pleasant surprises. What draws people to these festivals is not just the work. It's not just the plays or meeting the directors or the actors. It's the environment. So this is a part. It's it's well done. American director of theater, opera, and film, Julie Ting. So good to see you. Very nice to be here in this beautiful little water town of Wuzhen.、Mm -hmm. First time in China. Yes. The yes. first time in a, such a nice place like Wuzhen. It's unbelievable for me. It's so beautiful. It's a dream. <laughs> It's absolutely stunning. Have, have you had time to actually walk around to see the little town itself? Very early this morning, which was a great time to do it. We、mm. got up and we walked around, and we haven't taken a boat yet. But this is. The little town, the venue for this festival. This、yes. is the theater festival in Wuzhen.、Mm -hmm. Have you also got the chance to see some of the plays here? I saw one play last night from Lithuania, but tonight I'm very happy to see Chinese plays because that's why I'm here.、That's、for、right. me, from from the West, I would rather see Chinese or Japanese or a, at least Asian plays that don't necessarily come to America. Right. Yeah.、Uh, first time to get in touch with Chinese plays? No. I actually saw one of Stan Lee's plays in New Jersey last year. When, that's dream, when dream. I met him.、Uh, what was it called? No, not the dream one. Not the dream one.、Uh -huh. Not the、uh, long one, the、no. eight-hour play. No, not、uh -huh. that one. I heard about that one. Right, I want right, to see that one. Right. But let me see if I've seen any other、uh, Peony Pavilion. There's been some that have come to、mm. to the Lincoln Center Festival.、Mm. So, but not much. Yeah. Well, this is a new, a young theater festival.、Mm -hmm. It's only. In its third years, year, yeah, yeah, but、uh, we can kind of feel it's their ambition, you know, to. It's very impressive. Yeah, make it one of the major ones in the world, in, if not another Avignon, but basically a major one in China. How do you see this? I absolutely, and I don't know why it's another. It should be another Avignon. I, no, I don't think that's a problem,、uh. because I think as China has opened its arms to the West and also to other cultures. People will love to be able to come here because、mm. it's very beautifully restored.、Mm. So, like Venice, I've been to the Venice Film Festival. I've been to San Sebastian Film Festival. When what draws people to these festivals、mm. is not just the work, it's、mm -hmm. not just the plays,、mm -hmm. or meeting the directors or the actors. It's the environment. So,、mm. this is a part.、Uh, it's it's well done. I know there's a lot of tourism and all of that, but. Still, look at it. It's absolutely beautiful to、mm. look at. So this gives people a feeling. I think the experience of seeing various aspects of China is very important. That's true. Yeah. I mean, one good thing about it is this is a little town where you can see theaters, you can see plays inside theaters, but at the same time there is a carnival event going on. So you actually you would just bump into plays, you know. Anywhere, I just did crossing the bridge. You did. Yes, yes, I just did. It was gorgeous. Traditional、we、opera, the, right? The gongs, right? Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah, and also you see people just passing through while we are having this interview right next to this canal over here. Right.、And、this is, you know, the liveliness about having a, a, a festival maybe in a little town like this. I think the humanity is the important thing about theater, and. There's a certain fear people have of China being so big and overwhelming. So this this creates an intimacy, 
where people will have a very easy time meeting other people. That's really critical in a festival is you sit in a bar or some of these restaurants, look, there's only two tables. We went in and Mr. Shu over there went to see what they were eating. You know, you don't do that in a big restaurant. He said, oh, that looks good. And they were saying, you know, this dish is good. That, okay, we'll have that. Just two tables. That, it's, a, it's a unique experience. The sense of intimacy. Yeah, intimacy is very important. Well, you said this is your first visit to China, but I guess you're not new. Not at all. <laughs> you spent a few years in Indonesia. I spent four and years. And in Japan. Yes, yes. I and spent my young, early 21-year-old days in <laughs> Indonesia. And uh, I went for three months and stayed four years, so watch out, because that's a problem with me. I can, I can fall in love with a place and then want to, want to stay and work there. Uh, yes, I had a fellowship when I was just graduating from college, but I also had been in a theater company. Mm. And it was in visual theater and experimental puppet theater in Eastern Europe, Indonesia, and Japan. Mm -hmm. Because Indonesia and Japan have one of the, both have the oldest forms of puppet theater, the bunraku in Japan and the wayan kulit, mm -hmm. which is the leather shadow plays in Java and Bali. And in the West, puppetry was always kind of a children's art form. And in the East, it's especially in those two countries, maybe here, I just, I'm not as familiar, mm -hmm. but it's considered the, one of the finest, most respected, revealed art forms and it's actually related to ancestor worship. That's the true. the Bayangan, the Wayang Kulit is ba from Bayangan the word and those are the ancestors. So the shadows were the ancestors. Now it's more of an entertainment but it's still locked up into in traditions and um, that was very exciting for me as a young theater mm. maker to see. You, you, you studied folklore, you studied uh, traditional puppetry art in, in Japan, in, in Indonesia. How had have that been influencing your career later on in theater? I think a lot of Western theater makers, even Brecht, uh, obviously Artaud, um, many have been inspired by Asian theater. It was amazing to see theater function in its original form. And mm. what I mean by that is it was part of the village culture. You could be a farmer, a tailor, a school teacher, but you still played the gamelan or you performed. The children would sit on their parents' laps as the gamelan was being played, like Suzuki method of That's teaching. part of their life. It's part of their life. And the children's hands are on their daddy's hands, so they automatically are learning how to play gamelan. Mm. The little children perform the Balinese style, and they could be doing ancient stories, but the clowns, like in Shakespeare, the clowns would be making comments, political commentary. I think those four years in Asia, I, I traveled even more to Thailand and mm. Singapore, just missed China, but yeah. um, those years were very formative. They're, they're, I call, it's like, I use the word fire a lot because you get transformed in the fire, so it was very difficult, mm. but also transformative years for me, very mm. important years that I constantly can go back to. Chinese artists are also trying very hard and working very hard to try to incorporate all these traditions into their artworks actually mm -hmm. and sometimes and probably they haven't found the perfect way to do so like a few years ago we had that you know uh, Kung Fu Panda once again people were asking how come and you have the Chinese great panda but at the same time this is Hollywood production <laughs> right. you have Mulan Hollywood production right. and you have all these elements a foreign production what do you think is the key in, you know, incorporating all these traditional country, cultural elements in a modern art production. Obviously, your traditions inspire other people, and that's perfectly okay. So for me, technique, technique belongs to the world. Mm. You can do ballet here, but your soul of the ballet, how you do it, has to be your soul. Mm. So it really is more about how the individual artist or the company is invested in the work. It can't just be mimicking. Mm -hmm. You can't just pick up and do a Broadway musical and make it, you shouldn't copy. You, I don't, that doesn't mean you have to make it completely culturally Chinese, but the people who are doing it have to be in it. They have mm. to feel it. Mm. It's more like you absorb, you digest, and you're bringing out. That's right. With the touch. Yes, with, with the touch, you know, and, and therefore it's a new, when you want to create something you call original, 
because almost nothing is original. Mm. Shakespeare, our great Western writer, he stole everything. All his stories were Greek myths, Latin myths. He didn't, he didn't make up most of his stories. He was a voracious artist. He had an appetite for it. But how he put them out, how he told the stories, there was the genius. Mm -hmm. So in something like The Lion King, when people come, the story's okay. It's not really Hamlet, but, you know, it's okay. You kind of, everybody will recognize the story of the boy, the prodigal son who has to go away, learn his lesson, and come back. Because every culture has the hero story, you know, the journey of the hero. But what is fresh for people is the art of telling the story. So what is important is as equal to the story is how the story is told. Let's talk about Lion King first. That was uh, the project actually you were very much known for now these days in China. But that was not your first project, basically. You, you, you've done that I mean, long, long before that. Yeah. But almost, it seems to me, it's almost you were waiting. You were already right there for that project. And that project won you Tony Awards. I mean, how, how did this all happen? I wouldn't have been interested in working with Disney, quite honestly. It wasn't my thing at all. And was I animation or no, no, in just the 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 world. It's not. It was too commercial for me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not my. I was doing opera, avant-garde theater. Exactly. I was. I'd done 20 years of work already. I worked in Japan on Oedipus Rex with Seijo Ozawa mm -hmm. and Jesse Norman, Bryn Terfel, 120 men in the. And you also had one company in Indonesia. I had my own company in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. I'd done a lot of theater off-Broadway. I'd won many awards. I had a MacArthur Fellowship. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't an unknown, but I was unknown in the commercial arena. Mm. And I, I had never seen the animated film. <laughs> didn't, didn't see it until they called me up on the phone. It was so, such a hit at the time. I know, but it's not my cup of tea, you okay. know? It wasn't my thing. Then I saw it, and I, I admired it a lot. I admired it quite a lot. I thought, I thought visually it was beautiful. I liked the South African sound. I thought the story had potential, was strong. Maybe not, that nobody felt it was complete enough for a musical. It needed to have more added to it, which we did. You know, we, uh, we created the second act. It's, it's much more developed in the, in the musical for the stage than in the movie. But it was, it was such a, a wonderful challenge. The idea of putting a stampede on stage is very appealing. <laughs> I like that. I like doing things that are really impossible because then you need to find the means, you know, okay, the theatrical means to do it. What was the first thing you think of at the time? I mean, how did you basically start a project like that? Well, they were very open and they allowed me to think about the story because um, the producers did feel that they weren't they couldn't figure out how are you going to do this on the stage they thought impossible so Tom Schumacher he knew I had techniques to move away from just the human the human size you know I didn't want to hide the actors faces I didn't want to do just makeup like picking opera because it, these are big animals lions elephants you know you want to the scale I had to play with scale so while I worked on the story Part of the story that I was creating had half humans, half animals in it. The story didn't quite work. They were very open. They let me use my imagination. Then we, we heard my, it wasn't crazy, but it was, a, it was a wild second half. They knew they didn't want to go that far, but I learned, aha, I want to put the human and the animal. So I had to do the visual of the animal head and the human below, which is a double event, so we call it a double event. And so I build the cheetah off the body of the dancer. You could see the humans in all of the animals because in the animated film, you are very aware of the personality of the actors portraying the voice, of speaking the mm -hmm. voice. You know Scar is Jeremy Irons' face. Yeah. So how do you do that on stage? 
You allow the human face to have makeup, extreme makeup like Kabuki or Beijing Opera or whatever, but this becomes the animal, and when they bend over, they become the aggressive, more, more animal animal. So I, I, I had to, the story plus the technique was moving along at the same time. Mm. So when had all these figures, characters on stage, design, everything, everything else just came in the right place? Well, it was a magical time. It was pretty amazing. I designed the costumes, I sculpted the masks and puppets, I worked with Michael Curry on the te technique. Um, I, ha I was able to hire a fantastic set designer and we worked together. It's a, it was a two-year development. It takes, took about two years, even though there already were five songs from the movie. Then we added another 10 or 15. Lebo M, who had done the background music from South Africa, became foreground. The South African choruses, which were background, mm -hmm. they, when you're going on stage, you're going to see the chorus. So they become very big personality. The chorus is equal. Mm -hmm. It's a very important part of The Lion King. And I said to the producers, I want the languages of Xhosa, Zulu, and Susutu, I want the original languages to stay. And they will stay in China. Mm -hmm. They will not be singing in Chinese, those languages. The English will be in Chinese, and all the African languages will stay in African language. Mm -hmm. You also mentioned earlier uh, Shakespeare. You actually had quite a few adaptations of Shakespeare's, yes, Shakespeare's yes. works. And what is the, um, the core in adapting Shakespeare's works? And everyone is, is doing that, basically. We see different Shakespeare's plays on right. different stages anywhere. Yes, but Shakespeare, this is the one statistic that I like. He's the most successful screenwriter in the history of the world because there have been 900 films of Shakespeare. 900 films. Japan, Russia, all over the world, Africa, you know, everybody has done Shakespeare. What I love about Shakespeare as, an, as a writer is that he tells very complex human stories. Complex. It's not, it's not like today in the Marvel comics, the good guy is the good guy, the bad guy is the bad guy. These ancient, these stories that Shakespeare writes, the protagonist has many levels. Sometimes you love him, and then it's like Breaking Bad. And then, which I think is very Shakespearean, then you go, he's a monster. Titus is like that. He's the good general who comes home from the war, successful. They want him to be the emperor. He says no, and by the end, he's baking his enemy's children into pies. You know, he becomes this incredible monster, madman. And you say, how did a writer do that? You don't know who to identify with. This is why we love Shakespeare. Very complex. We can all be the good or the bad. We have all the potential inside us. Humanity is shocking. We get shocked when we see uh, what humans are capable of doing. But beautiful stories are written actually hundreds of years ago. I mean, when you adapt all these stories to a modern audience, what do you do? Humanity has hardly changed. So again, it's like, how does the story that is an ancient story of humanity gets told by the artist in a fresh and new way? I think Shakespeare is contemporary for all times. That's why he can be adapted into contemporary dress with still the great language. Ill met by moonlight, proud Titania. What jealous Oberon? My gentle pack, come hither, fetch me the flower. The juice of it on sleeping eyelids lay. Will make all man or woman madly. 
doat upon the next live creature that it sees. <laughs>you know the attraction what is the uh, the core theme in all these different genres that's absolutely it i'm not going to do invested in the story i i would say that when i did the beatles movie across the universe that was slightly different because that was in 2007 very good mm -hmm. i don't know <laughs> probably and i'm trying to do it on the stage in the future i really want to do a stage version of that musical mm. movie musical so it started in a movie but Clearly, it wasn't the story that brought me into that. It was the Beatles, the Beatles music. Mm -hmm. But once I knew we were setting these Beatles songs into the 60s, the 1960s, when they were written, it's not about the Beatles. It's about Americans and English and you know, Vietnamese. It's, it takes place during the crisis, those critical years during the Vietnam War. Uh, prior and during. So it's pretty much 1960 to 1967, squished into four years. And it, it goes from the innocent Beatles, you know, the innocent songs of the Beatles, I want to hold your hand and she loves you, yeah, 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 those types, to the psychedelic Beatles, to the political Beatles. Uh, their journey as musicians, look at how their music changed. So we put their music into the lives of these six young Americans, not just Americans, uh, but these six young people's lives during the crisis, during the drugs, during the whole time. And that was a very exciting project to develop with two other writers because I created the story from the songs. Take a sad song and make it better. Remember to let us. That was a very different way of creating a musical. But that's because it was written, music pre-written. I will accept a job because I'm, I'm excited by the content and that inspires me into, into creating the style. If we look at all these projects you've done, award-wise, it seems you have a very high success rate, basically. You, you do films, you win Oscars, you do theater art, you win Tonys, and then Emmys. And is there something magical there? I mean, people will be asking, what's the key to your success? Well, you know, and you know this, Spider-Man didn't get finished, my version of Spider-Man. So there's a, I wouldn't see, but people could say that's a failure. What failed was you didn't get to see the finished product. That's sad for me, because I still believe in what we were doing. But there are many circumstances that make something fall apart, fail. We don't have to go into that now, but even with what would be perceived as a failure, it's a tremendous life experience. It's a tremendous life experience. It's, it's part of what an artist has to go through. You can't just have one success. And people don't want you to have one success after another. So that's part of what happens is that there is, oh, how can everything work? But you know what? Everything doesn't work. Not every project I've done has made money. It's been fulfilling artistically, but disappointing in box office. I wouldn't call that a failure. To me, it's, it's really, did you fulfill what you started out, what your vision was? Did, were you able to complete it? Um, and that is when, 
with, with something like Spider-Man, which we didn't get to finish it for all the circumstances, that I think is sad. Mm. So not everything, you know, not everything has been rosy, happy, easy. If we talk, look at the relationship between producers and, mm -hmm. and directors, artists, mm -hmm. and the money man. I mean, the argument it's been there for like forever, and it's also happening in China too. And sometimes directors might be struggling with the compromises they're not willing to make, but you know the producers would insist because they have the market in their mind. Is it the deadlock? I mean, how do you solve this? Well, you know, it's always been that way since Amadeus, you know, I mean, it's, it's been that way before that, that if you're going to involve money, no matter small or big, there's going to be compromises. Artists are constantly compromising, but that's okay. And sometimes there's a, there's a saying, limitation is freedom. There's certain things that actually make your imagination Sometimes when you say, oh, I can't do that, okay, so how am I going to, how am I going to solve this? You become more resourceful. You can, your imagination can actually create something even better when you have limitations. Mm. So sometimes having a lot of money is not useful, mm. you know, so you have to know how to play the balance, the game, and very much know who you're getting involved with. You know, who is it? Are you on the same page? Do you see it the same way? And sometimes artists are so hungry to get the money that they get involved in the wrong projects, but then you can't complain later. But your, yourself, in your own interest, I mean, it seems you would do all these different Medium? subjects, different yeah. mediums. I mean, how do you choose them? What, what form of art? I mean, what subjects, what themes? Um, let me see, I have 10 projects that I'm because it's not that I want to do 10, it's just that even at this point in my career, it's still difficult to get money for projects. Even for you? Oh yes, absolutely, never changes. Because the kinds of things that I want to do push the envelope. I don't, I, I turn down a lot of Hollywood movies or things that I say, oh, I've seen it already, it's not, it's boring. I don't want to spend two years of my life on a film that's not going to move me and 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 challenge me it's it's i get excited i get animated when i go wow how do i do this how do i create this well basically this time around you don't have a play here uh for the festival in wujan no i don't but i guess this is sort of working as a little play as all these passers by they're watching us it's a doing theatrical this moment <laughs> basically exactly but if you're going to bring a play to Wujin, mm -hmm. maybe next year. I hope so. That would be wonderful. If I do one in New York that you can pick up and bring. Mm -hmm. Haven't decided yet, but we, we have a lot to look forward to actually Thank in the future. So Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Shishu. To the point, the tempest that I bade thee, I boarded the king's ship. In every cabin, I flamed amazement. I will flay them all, even to roaring. I have made you mad. <laughs> Of such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with a sleep.